Hey, assalamu alaikum everyone. Peace be upon you and welcome back to my channel. If you've been here a while, you probably know that I recently got an iPad and let's just say I wasn't amused. About two months ago, I discovered the world of digital planning and journaling. And even though I'm a bit of a traditionalist when it comes to journaling, I kind of fell in love. So I'm gonna show you how I use my iPad as a planner using an app called GoodNotes. I have the iPad Air 4 in rose gold. It's got a 10.9 inch display and it's compatible with the second generation Apple Pencil, which is what I have here. Unfortunately, I have no idea what third party pens or styluses work, if any. Okay, there are a couple of different apps you can use for digital journaling on the iPad. The two most noteworthy apps, pun intended, are GoodNotes and Notability. They're also rated the highest in the App Store. When I first got my iPad, I considered both apps, but I wound up buying GoodNotes mainly because Notability charges for some additional features like converting handwriting to text, which GoodNotes includes. The one-time payment covers the app for use on iPads, iPhones, and Mac OS. One perk of notability that's worth mentioning though is its advanced audio recording features. Okay, so once you've purchased and installed GoodNotes onto your iPad, you'll wanna import a PDF planner into the app. There are a couple of ways to do this and I'll show you two methods. The first way is to open up GoodNotes and hit new, then hit import and then you can find the file and click on it. A second way is to navigate to the file in your files, you know, explorer app thing, press and hold the file, and then hit the share button, and then click open in GoodNotes. A little message will pop up in GoodNotes asking you if you wanna import as a new document or import into a document that's currently open. That's up to you. Some of you might know by now that I'm a DIY girl and I love doing tedious crafty things. Quick backstory. When I first used Photoshop 5.0 in like fourth grade, I loved using it to draw and design things that it wasn't really intended for. I liked designing boxes and placing text in them, even though Microsoft Word definitely existed already. Eventually, I started creating abstract graphics and getting into photography and video, and here I am. You can find this exact digital planner on my website, which I'll link in the description and paste here in the video as well. Watch through the entire video for a special coupon code to get these chic neutral stickers for free. I'll be placing the code in GoodNotes during the tutorial, so keep an eye out for it. Okay, back to digital planning. I'm going to walk you through the tools in GoodNotes and how I like to use them. First things first, to access the settings for each tool, if there are any, you simply tap a second time on the tool and the settings will pop up. Um, let's first cover what's up here. When you first open a file in GoodNotes, it'll look like this. Personally, I don't like the status bar showing up here so I'll click these three dots and go to document editing, and then I'll toggle off status bar. You can also move the toolbar to the bottom. You can change the scrolling direction of your document and other things. A perk of GoodNotes is that it has the option to open multiple documents in different tabs. So you can easily switch back and forth between like a sticker sheet document and your planner. Or if you're a student, maybe a textbook and notes. Next to the three dots, you've got this button to toggle between reading mode and writing mode. If your planner or document has any clickable links, you'll need to switch your document into read mode to click the links. Links are common in digital planners and even eBooks, like in tables of contents. This planner I designed also has links, which I'll show you here. Next, you've got this button to add a new page, image, photo, or even import something into your document. And then you've got your standard undo and redo buttons. 
The shortcut for undo in GoodNotes is a double tap with two fingers. In Procreate and Adobe Fresco, you tap once with two fingers to undo. In GoodNotes, you tap twice. I don't know if there's a shortcut for redo. All right, onto the main toolbar. So the first tool I'll talk about is the obvious, the pen tool. The first thing I recommend you do in here is set up your writing posture. Click stylus and palm rejection and go ahead and pick which writing posture matches yours the best. We've got three different pen styles. My personal go-to is the ball pen. Think of it as your standard ballpoint gel pen. You can change the size of the pen tip up here on the right. As you can tell, I like thinner pen tips. Over here is where you select your pen colors. You can add and remove colors from this palette, but you can't create several different palettes like you can in drawing apps and whatnot. To add a new color, just pop over to custom, figure out your color, and hit add to presets. If you doubled up or messed up, or you just want to remove some of the default colors, click edit, and then go ahead and remove colors or adjust them even. There's also a fountain pen style and brush pen style. These have additional settings for tip sharpness and or pressure sensitivity. One thing I did find a little annoying about GoodNotes pen tool is that there's no smoothing or streamline option like there is in Procreate and Fresco, but then again, GoodNotes isn't made for illustrating. It's all right though. I got used to it and you probably will too. Maybe in a few weeks, I'll share some tips on how I improved my handwriting on my iPad. Okay, the next tool in this lineup is the eraser tool. Pretty standard, comes with three default sizes, which you cannot change. But something kind of cool about the eraser tool is that the brush size stays the same even when you zoom way in. It's not relative like the pen tool. So if you write tiny like me and the smallest eraser size is still too big, just zoom in and then erase. In the additional settings for the eraser, you've also got the option to erase the entire stroke and also to erase just the highlighter. Useful tools depending on what you're doing. Okay, then there's the highlighter. You can think of this as a real highlighter or just as a brush with a low opacity. Unfortunately, you're stuck with round brushes, so no chisel tips here. But the great thing about this highlighter tool is that when you draw over dark or black color text or writing, it'll go behind the writing. If you go over white though, you'll notice it's not actually going behind, it's just tinting. But since black is, well, black, it can't be tinted. Just something to note. Also, the highlighter has the ability to snap into a straight line. You can either turn the setting on here, or you can just draw and hold and it will straighten out. Be careful if you wanna draw a squiggle though, because sometimes if you draw slow, it'll think you're trying to straighten out or draw a shape. Speaking of which, next up is the shape tool. I'll admit I don't use this tool much, but it can be really handy. It isn't a typical shape tool with preset shapes. It takes whatever you draw or write and tries to match it to a shape. If you don't let go right away, you can shift around the automated shape. And if you do accidentally let go, you can tap on the shape with the shape tool still selected and these little points will appear so you can adjust the shape. There's also a setting to fill color, but it appears to fill it with like a low opacity fill. All right, next up is the lasso tool. It's your typical lasso selection tool, no shape selections. One feature I love about the lasso tool here is the ability to toggle whether the tool selects handwriting, images, and or text boxes. This is super helpful when you're drawing or writing on top of images and you want to rotate, move, or resize the writing without moving the picture. Keep in mind that the highlighter counts as handwriting too. Okay, next up is a tool that's new to GoodNotes. They just added it to the app maybe like a month or two ago, 
so I'm lucky enough to barely have used GoodNotes without this awesome feature. It's called Elements, and it's perfect for digital stickers. Basically, this feature allows you to save and reference a library of images or multi-layered stickers across all of GoodNotes. It's actually really versatile, but it's hard to define. Let me give you an example. There are some default elements that GoodNotes provides you with, and these are super cool because you can actually edit the components within the elements. So here's a little sticker that says, thanks a lot. Let's place this here and let's press and hold on the text and click edit. You can actually change the text in the element. To save an image or layered design as an element, make sure to toggle on handwriting images or text box, depending on what you're saving, and then make your selection. Tap within the selection and click add element. Then you can add it to a pre-existing collection or make a new one. Keep in mind that if you save a low res picture as an element, the element will be low res when you place it somewhere and you won't be able to enlarge it without it looking super pixelated. Okay, here's an example of a header I created within GoodNotes. It's different layers of handwriting and highlighter. I'll save this as an element, and then I'll insert the element somewhere on another page. And now look, I can select a single layer or portion of this element and still work with it as though I had just drawn this from scratch in multiple layers. The Elements tool doesn't just take a screenshot as a flattened image, which is a feature in GoodNotes, by the way. The Elements tool actually like saves the layers. This tool also comes with a built-in button that allows you to open recently used elements in a split screen window. This makes it much easier to bring a bunch of stickers into your planner. There's probably even more to this tool that I have yet to discover, but hopefully that was a thorough enough explanation to get you started. Okay, almost done here. Next up is the image insertion tool. It's what you would expect. You can insert a picture from your Photos app or from local or iCloud storage. By the way, this also means if you plug an external hard drive into your iPad via USB-C, you can access that here too. Here's the text tool, pretty standard. You can change the font, text size, paragraph alignment, line spacing, which is really useful, text color, and also text box style. I haven't explored this too much yet, honestly, but I think it's cool that you can change the style at all, let alone pick from presets or manual settings, which you should know by now I'm a huge fan of. Background color, border color and size, roundedness of the corners, shadow, and padding. The last tool here is a laser pointer tool. It's useful when instructing, maybe in a tutorial like this one or a screen recording of GoodNotes. You've got two options here, the dot pointer or the path trail type pointer with which you can draw. I forgot about the zoom tool all the way over here. It's like a magnification window. You can adjust the size of the window or, um, you know, like the field of view. And you can also adjust the split screening here. I mostly only use this for when I'm getting down to the bottom of a page and it's getting hard for me to write on the edge of the iPad. I'll pop this open and it'll allow me to like shift my writing space higher. I've heard some people say their handwriting looks nicer when they use this feature, but thus far it hasn't made a difference for me. I actually prefer writing smaller, so the magnification is actually kind of counterintuitive for me. Alright, I think that was a lot of information for one video. There are still features within GoodNotes that I didn't cover, like being able to change the cover of your different documents or split screen view between two documents. And I'm sure there are features that I have yet to discover too, but for now, I will leave you to it. I hope this walkthrough tutorial was helpful and made GoodNotes a little less intimidating for you. 
and I hope that you'll enjoy using GoodNotes as much as I do. If you want some free stickers, remember to use the coupon code that I hid in an element of this tutorial. Hint, hint. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me to see what my audience likes and finds useful. And don't forget to check out my website to buy the digital planner that you saw in this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.